Howdy folks, if you've ever gone shopping for a portable table saw, I, I usually look at Home Depot, Lowe's, and Harbor Freight, <laughs> and in that order. <laughs> and it seems like that's all there is. Uh, I have looked at Amazon a few times. We had a few of the Amazon ones in here in the past, and they were not good, but uh, there's another place we can go and look that I didn't even realize they had a decent table saw. And I should have known because they seem to have a lot of good stuff. So today we're going to look at Bevor. <laughs> yeah. It came in a box. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So the core of any woodworking shop or do it yourself, whatever, uh, table saw is kind of number one. It's also statistically the highest for uh, accidents, which is not good. But this one looked like it had some really good features to it and it's portable, but it also comes on a stand with wheels. So, you know, it is very much the portable saw that it needs to be. And you and I, you know, when we're stuck for space, a portable table saw is nice to have, but a lot of them are too small or there's certain, you know, gadgets to them so we're going to take a look at the whole spectrum on that and i need to take get this out of the box <laughs> man it's a big box and uh we'll take a look at the vivor's portable table saw it looks like it's a pretty darn good buy i got it out on the box i put it on the table here as you can see for a portable it's a big portable Portables are generally pretty small table topped and you know, there's a lot of things about them I'm not fussy on so this one here was like, you know, okay, it's it's a good size, you know But I'll give it to you in inches the actual hard table itself is 25 inches across here But you also have this extension piece that will go way out for you know large stock And then the actual depth of the table comes back a little over almost 22 and three-quarter inches So there you go. It's a 10 inch uh, 10 inch blade I haven't checked the, the arbor on it yet. I would assume it's a 5 8 arbor, but we'll we'll get to that. The motor under there looks really big and heavy, so it seems like it has a really powerful uh, motor inside. We got to check everything out because price and features and things. Uh, we'll be doing. We, we have to do a little bit of comparison, look around the market because when I was shopping, and you know, if you're ever shopping for a portable table saw. There's a lot of questions, you know. Uh, right now, this thing looks uh, pretty heavy, all pretty heavy duty. So, and it's from Viver. I kind of expect Viver's going to surprise me, and so far they're surprising me. But let's get into it. I'm going to get the pipe work on, get her on the wheels, get her just here on the floor, so it's just a saw and me and you and you know work on all this. Mm -hmm. yeah, the first thing we had to do was put this together because the saw is going to sit on this. And I thought, well, we'll throw this together first and then we'll get to the saw and the features and stuff. This shouldn't be that important. And in, in, in many ways, it's, it's not. But uh, the manual has instructions for assembly. And I'm going to have to give it one star because the manual, the picture is really small. It's really hard to make out what the parts are. And so you sort of end up just using their, the big picture that they have with the saw and some common sense as to how this thing lays out to how it's going to work. And once you, let's see if I can do this or not, I don't know. Yeah. And once you get it all figured out, it locks in like that. And then once you have it, like, okay, you know, it's all good. All uh, the square holes for the cap screws were not really big enough. The, uh, the hardware was just enough to put this together, which was good because a lot of times I'll actually count holes in hardware to figure out where things go, but I'll, I was a couple of hours, yeah, just assembling this. That's not that good. But I said, that's not a deal breaker. It's not unusual when you get into something like this with a lot of pipe and nuts and bolts, you know, you can end up spending most of your day just trying to, you know, figure it all out, especially if the uh, manual is not very clear. I think what they should have done, I don't know if they have one out there, I didn't check for it, but they probably should have a video on just assembling this. <laughs> it may make it a little bit easier, but I think Beaver needs to take a look at the supplier for this particular component and say, you know, you need to pick up your game a little bit because this is just not that great. It's a good stand, I'm sure, when it's all said and done. Uh, seems to have all the functional pieces that it should have, but it's just not an easy build and it should be. It should be a no-brainer and uh, it turned into a bit of a headache to figure out where all the pipe out of the box goes to create this stand. Now, 
I'm going to put this uh, saw up here on the stand, get this out of the way so we can have a good look and see the saw, the stand, everything. I want you to see the motor in this thing. The motor's big. Okay, I bolted the saw to the chassis, but there's one thing that uh, you should know. If you get this particular kit, there's four black washers and there's four, uh, I guess we'll say nickel plated type shiny washers. Those nickel plated ones should go under your cap screw head when you put your cap screw down through and put your bolt under here. Uh, Vivor uh, put some holes in the body here so there's different ways of uh, optional mounting for the saw to go on different things. So this is just, you know, for this particular uh, stand, we, you know, we're all hooked up. The, um, uh, so the next thing we need to do, of course, is uh, unlock and stand it up and just see how we do with it. And it, let's see, we push the lock down to release and we roll over and yeah, there you go. And so now she can be, uh, actually you can pick her up at that point and uh, roll around with the saw, with the job saw. And when you get to the job, uh, let's see how, this, how hard this is going to be, but uh, I guess we'll put her down. And then let's see if we can't, that's unlocked, so we just do this at this point. And wow, hey, pretty cool. Yep, very cool. And now you have a job saw. I got her tipped up just for a second, like I said. It's a 15 amp, 5,000 RPM motor, but look at the size of the housing and the, the style of this motor. It reminds me of the Bosch, the DeWalt's. A lot of the big motors are like that style and that shape for some reason. So I have a funny feeling it probably was sourced from the same company, but the motor is big so that you know and that makes a good statement for me because I, I you know you want a good strong motor for a table saw so up on top in order to answer the obvious question uh, 5 8 server by the looks of it but I just wanted to take it apart and absolutely check it out so I popped this off this is locked in at this end and has a spring-loaded clip on this end so you have to kind of pull really hard to get this to pop up but everything's brand new so yeah so we even took the blade off and I'm not going to keep this blade on here at all, but I figured we'd try it out with a Craftsman blade here with a 5 8 Arbor and just see if she fits like she's supposed to. And I don't see any reason why not, but let's do her. Yep, and yep, good, nice, solid, tight fit. Uh, now, talk about the Arbor here. Uh, there's a, <laughs> this is a two wrench system here, which is really good. They give you the wrenches. They're bolted to the side of the housing, but the big wrench fits the big nut, and the little wrench, uh, the smaller of the two, fits this lock screw. So the whole thing locks together nicely. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and just, yeah, we'll go ahead and put this uh, saw blade back in here. Mm, yeah, give it the old, mm, mm, and uh, there you go, see? So they're totally closed wrenches, which sort of threw me off. They bolt to the side of the, uh, on the side of the housing here. There's a spot where you can store these guys so you don't lose them. I've mounted the uh, riving knife and I've also put the guard on. And I like this guard. I uh, generally don't like guards, but this is about as about the best idea I've seen in a while for the industry. And I wanted you to see this because it is a decent guard here. And it also looks kind of vaguely familiar. Uh, looking at some of the high-end saws that are portables, I've noticed this is the style of guard we seem to be seeing. Also, the riving knife they've got on here is a, it's a big one, but it's a, it's a nice setup at the back that will run up and down with the saw. Now, this is the next other, let's get the tape measure. I want to show you this. Actually, right, so I'm going to take the guard off just, just for a second so we can do this, but I've got the saw set. I think that's, yeah, that's maximum right there. And this is a big question too with portables a lot of times, but this one here, is got a good bite on all the way up to three and a half inch bite. Okay, so the next feature I want to take a quick look at was I've pulled this all the way out and we'll just run the tape off of it so we can see, yeah, about 25 and a half inches over to here. Okay, I pulled the fence out for a minute because I wanted to show you this. <clears throat> it has it has a couple ideas here that it locks in with a piece of aluminum here that's on an angle, so it sort of like shoots, it goes down into this track and of course locks like it should, but it also has this accessory piece here. And uh, I really, this is something that all portables are do. This, this is nothing to do with uh, Viva or anybody else. It's like, this is so typical. I have never really been too crazy about this type of fence situation because it, you know, I find them kind of flimsy and they're, they're 
just basically, well, yeah, they're not great. They do the they do the job, but that's about all, that's about all I can say about that. Uh, I've never never cared for these fences. The miter again, very typical of all the uh, portables, really. But it's got a nice wheel at the front here that will help you know guide it into there to start it, and also locks it in so it's not going to fall out even if it's way out here. And of course, it slides up and down nicely and. There's almost no play at all. You've got a big old plastic knobby handle here for you know doing your angles or whatever it is you're you're into, which will go up to 60 or minus 60 on the miter, which you know as opposed to 45, it'll actually go to a 60 degree, which is kind of an interesting feature. Uh, a lot of the saws don't do that, so that is kind of something that uh, seems like kind of makes this one stand alone a little bit. Well, I think it's time. It is a table saw, so let's cut some piece of scrap here and just see how it goes through. Also, we're going to hear the motor, so let's let's have a check on all that. And you notice that also the motor has a uh, brake system, so it kind of it slows down quickly. That went through like well. As expected, that's three-quarter plywood, and it went through really quickly. Made a nice cut, of course. Motor sounds really good, but also sounds really powerful. Uh, didn't hear any RPM drop off, of course. Well, I'd have to jam something pretty hard and heavy in here. Let's go see if we can find something bad. Okay, I found some really nasty yellow pine stuff. That's uh, basically it's like a hardwood. It's it is some really tough stuff, and this is scrap. So. If I cut a chunk off, I'm not losing, you know, there's no, there's no real waste here. So let's... <laughs> wow. Phew, went through that like butter. I did not expect it to cut that quickly. And that, wow, that did a terrific job. Uh, that is more impressive than the rest of the saw right there. <laughs> wow. Okay, a quick look at the controls. Obviously, you know, blade up, blade down. And also if you push this in and then you can uh, change the angle to bevel up to 45 degrees. This is off right now. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It'll have to be, it would have to be adjusted to set the zero correctly and the 45 probably to get it right. And that's something I would check with a, a miter gauge or a square, you know, speed square, something like that when I'm cutting. So I really, I never, I don't think I've ever used these gauges on any machine. So this is just very typical of a, a portable. The on and off, uh, not too crazy with this. It's not bad because the stop does hang out further than the go. So if you have to reach down and stop it all of a sudden, you're probably going to be okay with it. But I do like a real good big safety switch type thing for slapping to shut a saw off with. But this is so typical of all the uh, portables out there right now. I haven't got a yay or nay or anything about it. It's just like, yeah, there it is. You know, same as everybody else's. Okay, to finish up on features, uh, I've hooked the hose up here to the guard. There is a, an attachment here that comes with the saw that hooks up to the guard to act as a vacuum to help grab that sawdust out of there. And it goes back to a T-line at the back here, which also tees off for your, uh, so you can hook up your vacuum system. So you have a complete dust system here that will collect everything, which is, you know, that's a nice little feature, even if, uh, let's face it, between you and me, portable job saw, that's usually outside and, you know, we, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying. I will provide a link below for the, uh, where you can find this uh, table saw. Okay, it also comes with a push stick. So we've gone over the features and we've taken a look at the whole saw in general and, and all the different you know items that come with these. This is a good size, I think, for the price, which is what we got to talk about. And I'm hoping to get some comments below about it because uh, I really couldn't get a feel for that. The retail is $399, so she's not a cheap saw, but uh, she's got a deal on her right now over at Beaver and using their uh, deal and plus their uh, code, you're just as shy, I think right around $300. So it's like $319 and I think there's a 5% coupon or something you can throw in there as well. So you get a pretty good, you know, get a pretty good deal on it. So you're right around the $300 range. I think for $300, you're getting quite a bit of saw and very powerful uh, saw at that. Uh, there's lots of features here and I try to compare it with you know some of the other brand names that you and I are well aware of 
and I've always respected Viber because they always seem to come through with a little bit better features, a little better price, and saving me several hundred dollars, and I don't have to have the brand name thing that, you know, up here on the front somewhere. And so that's what I expect from this saw, and I see it, but it's, it's not the easiest thing because there's an incredible, a lot of market uh, going on out there right now. And there's some very cheap, uh, nasty, you know, job saws that I would not have, uh, you know, anywhere near me. Uh, this one here is very, very stable and it's got a nice size uh, table plus the extension on it is really smooth, really nice. Everything seems to work really well on it. So I say, I think it's, you know, for the, if you can get it for the 300, I'd say you're doing pretty darn good. Uh, the Bosch 669, I think it was. The DeWalt, I think, was either 599 or 549, somewhere in that range as well. Uh, there was some other brand names I looked at, and what I was really trying to do was pin it down to see what exact features it would fall into. But this one seemed to, you know, just be the middle of the road with everybody. It was like, well, you're, you're in that range, you know. But um, comment below about that situation. I'd like to hear if, if you think, is it fair value? You think it's too high a price? Uh, do you think you can do better buying some cheap brand name or something? I, I don't know. This seems like it's a really good quality saw. So, hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we've got a contest coming up on thurs Thursday. Yes, we're giving something away. And then I guess next Thursday we'll be giving something else away. And uh, we're going to continue to hopefully we'll keep up with that program a little bit too. Meantime, I'm out of here. Uh, wow, I can't get over that. Over and out.